Amen. Are you guys alive? <laughs> Wish you could have sang it with us, but you can't. <laughs> Join me by standing and turning and declaring the words of praise found in Psalms. You can find it in 681 or it'll be up on the wall. Stand and recite with me these words from the psalmist. I, the leader, you, the people. Clap your hands, all you nations. Shout to God with cries of joy. How majestic is the Lord most high. How mighty is his great sovereign over all the earth. Sing praises to God. Sing psalms in God's honor. God reigns over the nations. God is exalted over all. Praise the Lord, all people. Praise God's everlasting name. Oh, for a thousand tongues to sing my great Redeemer's praise. Let's raise our voices. God, we are gathered in your name. It is your name that we praise in this place and on our tongues. Lord, I pray in return that we have, as we have gathered at this banquet table this morning, that your Holy Spirit sweep through this place and touch us and inspire us and comfort us, whatever it is that we need at this place. And all of God's people said, Amen. invite someone here this morning with your spoken welcome. seated but let's sing the doxology praise god from whom all This week is our week of food, and Lewis will give us the first course of that meal, of that banquet today. And I think it's also fitting 
that as all the kids, you can all come forward, now all the kids come forward, that, that today's shine Sunday school message was about Jesus at a banquet talking about what it means to be banquet people. So Lewis is going to talk about the first course. You already saw them preparing for the second course. And of course in your bulletin, that outreach meal packaging is the third course of the great meal here in February that we as Bueller Mennonite Church are serving. Uh, if you haven't brought your soup up, bring it right now. It's a good time. Everybody gets a can to hold for a little while. All right, what is today? What are we celebrating today? What? Soup day. Well, what other, is there a name that we give this today? Anybody else? Here you go. Everybody got one? Everybody got one? Is there, there, is there another name we use today? What? Oh, he needs one. Yep. Super Bowl Sunday. Super Bowl Sunday. We have a great big bowl here, but wasn't big enough, was it? Oh, well, maybe next year we can get another one. Well, maybe we need two more. Don't know. Well, in our country, we celebrate this as Super Bowl Sunday. But in our church, we celebrate this as Soup Herb Bowl. And why are we collecting these cans of soup? Does anybody know? Hey. Because so the poor people can have the soup that they, they, they don't have the money for. To feed the hungry and satisfy those who are thirsty. And uh, what did we say last week about the soup? Why is the soup so important? There you go. Because it, has, because it can have water and soup. That's right. It has both food and water. So that's why we celebrate. Super Bowl. Now, <clears throat> one of the things I think is important is for us to remember that sometimes giving is more satisfying or makes us happier than receiving. So today, I don't have anything to give you because you have come with all these wonderful gifts. So in recognition of what you have done we're going to honor God with a prayer of dedication and we want to ask some people that really helped us do this and I'd like to ask uh, Joe and Blanca with fifth grade fifth and sixth grade class to come forward the rest of us I'd like for us to stand and raise our hands as uh, Wilmer gives us a prayer of dedication. Hey, you guys want to take some cans and hold them up? For hold them up. Heavenly Father, thank you for generosity and your spirit of generosity in this world. And I thank you for this collection of soup. And Lord, now we hand it over to your kingdom work to feed and to give drink to those who need it. And on this day where we celebrate so many other things, uh, help us too to remember your mission and your work in this place. So take these cans and bless them the person who opens it, heats it, drinks it and eats it, the family or whoever eats it, may it be a blessing to them. And Lord, I also pray for a blessing on those who, many people who have brought this food to this table. We pray this in the name of Jesus Christ, who said, if you do it unto the least of these, you do it to me. Amen. <laughs>
things like eagles. They will run and not get tired. They will walk and not become weary. If you would turn in your Bibles to Luke chapter 14, Luke chapter 14, I talked, we talked about it being banquets, season of eating for us, serving. Jesus gets invited to a banquet. In fact, my heading says, Jesus at a Pharisee's house for a dinner. Now, I'm going to read to you this whole story, and you're going to read along if you're reading along or if you're listening, you'll hear it. What I want you to do is to imagine this story with the noodle soup supper in mind.
One Sabbath, when Jesus went to eat in the house of a prominent Pharisee, he was carefully watched. There in front of him was a man suffering from dropsy. And Jesus asked the Pharisees and the experts in the law, remember it was Sabbath, is it lawful to heal on the Sabbath? But they remained silent. So taking hold of the man, Jesus healed him and sent him away. And then he asked the rulers of the law and the Pharisees, if one of you has a son or an ox that falls into the well on Sabbath day, will you not immediately pull him out? They had nothing to say. Well, so they go on eating, or get ready for eating. The appetizers are maybe now done. When Jesus noticed how the guests picked the places of honor at the table, he told them this parable. When someone invites you to a wedding feast, uh, don't take the place of honor, for a person more distinguished than you might have also been invited. If so, the host who invited both of you will come and say to you, give this man your seat then humiliated, you'll have to go and take the only seat that's left over, and that's the least important seat. But when you are invited, take the lowest place to begin with, so that when your host comes, he will say to you, friend, move up to a better place. Then you'll be honored in the presence of all your fellow guests. For everyone who exalts himself will be humbled, and he who humbles himself will be exalted. And if Jesus hadn't done enough, he turns to his host and he says, when you give a luncheon or a dinner, don't invite your friends, your brothers, or your relatives, or your rich neighbors. If you do, they might invite you back, and so you'll be repaid. But when you have a banquet, invite the poor, the crippled, the blind, the lame, and you'll be blessed. Although they can't repay you, you will be repaid at the resurrection of the righteous. Now, when somebody at the table heard them say this, he said to Jesus, Blessed is the man who will eat at the feast in the kingdom of God. How do you think Jesus replied? Well, a certain man was preparing a great banquet and invited many guests. At the time of the banquet, he sent his servant to tell those who had been invited, Come, everything's ready now. But they, were all, but they all alike began to make excuses. The first said, I have just bought a field and I must go and see it. Please excuse me. Another said, I've just bought five yoke of oxen. I'm going to go try them out. Please excuse me. Still another said, um, I just got married. I can't come. The servants came back and reported this to his master. And then the owner of the house became angry. And he ordered his servant go out quickly into the streets and the alleys of the town and bring in the poor, the crippled, the blind, and the lame. Sir, said the servant, what you have ordered has been done, but there is still room. Well, then go out again, said the master. Go into the roads and the country lanes. This is where we get that song, go in the, high, uh, the highways and the byways, the hedges and the, you know, the, the, the old uh, the country song. Go out there and make them come in so that my house will be full. And I tell you, not one of those who were invited will get a taste of my banquet. Heavenly Father, open our ears to hear, my mouth to speak. Amen. <clears throat> well, it seems like there was at least one dinner guest prepared to sweet speak into that awkward silence that must have followed Jesus' assessment and then his un-asked-for un, uh, advice about banquet invitations. But why the awkward silence, do you think? Well, since arriving at the party, Jesus had challenged everything. He had challenged Sabbath laws. He had healed a man right in front of them on Sabbath with dropsy. He had confronted the guests about their self-importance. And most recently here in this last one, he had rebuked the host. He had rebuked the gall of it. He had rebuked the host for who he had invited to this party. All of this at a gathering of the elite religious power brokers of the time, 
the Pharisees, the scribes, the religious lawyers, those with the right last names and those with the right connections. It was an awkward start to a dinner party. And Jesus was proving to be a less than compliant guest. Perhaps the man that blurted out in verse 15, blessed is anyone who will eat bread in the kingdom of God, saw it as a toast, a toast to sort of break up and lighten the mood. Hey man, we came here for a party. Let's keep the debating at home. Well, he certainly takes the heat away from the host, a man who must have been incredibly offended and embarrassed by his superstar guest. But if we think that Jesus is just criticizing the host, I think we missed the point. The open challenge to invite the poor, the crippled, the lame, the blind in verse 15, all of people you didn't even think about inviting to a party. You, in fact, the law prohibited you from inviting those people to these banquets. The open challenge to invite the poor, the crippled, the lame is not just directed at the host and his list of invitees. It is the definition of the kingdom of God. The challenge is an outlining of God's values. It speaks to the very values of God and God's kingdom. And when other guests bring, uh, and when the other guest brings up the kingdom of God into the party with his toast, Jesus says, well, now that you're talking about it, let's talk about it. You raised the topic. Let's talk about it. And the parable that follows, that last part of the parable in verse five, that follows verse 15, Jesus responds to the idea of blessing, of eating, of the kingdom of God. And Jesus replies by, now unsurprisingly, with another story, another banquet story. And Jesus tells about a host who sets together, puts together a great dinner. The invitations have gone out. The preparations have been made. The host is even such a host that right before this is all ready, he sends out a reminder. He sends out his very slaves and servants to go remind the people. So you didn't only receive the invitation in the mail. You got a knock at your door that says, okay, time to come. It's sort of like your Google Calendar reminder on your daily schedule. So... There's no question about forgetting it. Verse 17, come, come. Everything is ready now. You don't have to do anything. Come, everything is ready now. But these invited people seem easily distracted at best, even from heaven's feast. One has just bought land, he says. I better go check that out. The other, well, I've just bought five yoke of oxen, and you know when you get five yoke of oxen, you can't just go have lunch, you know. I can't come. Still another has just been married. Too busy, more important things to do. And so possession and work, even other relationships, take priority, and the slave returns with no guests. What does the host do? angers the host. He orders the immediate implementation of plan B. The slaves are again sent out not once but twice to find anyone to fill the tables. They are to seek out and to invite the poor, the crippled, the lame, and the blind, the very people that Jesus told the homeowner, the host, that he should invite to his next banquet in verse 13. And here is a zealous host who will have a full celebration of all that is good. He will share out of his goodness. He will share out of his, his, his wealth for anyone who wants to receive the hospitality, no matter the guests. And I think the host's last words are telling. In verse 24, none of those who were originally invited will taste my dinner. Those that know better won't get it. 
He's still angry at the lack of commitment and the priority displayed by those originally invited, the obvious guests, the learned guests, those that know everything, the connected guests, the guests with the right last names. After all, everything was prepared, freely offered, but they didn't come. And so I'm left wondering. I'm left wondering what it means for those first people around that table, the host, the guy that declared whatever he said there in verse 15, those that first heard this parable to come to the banquet of God. What does that mean? Have their connections, their religious connections, distracted them from the very essence of God's kingdom? Have the weeds of wealth and profit and popularity choked their ability to act on the values and on the invitation of God? And I wonder about us. I wonder about us. Who are those we would only invite as a second thought? For what or for whom are we prone to turn down the invitation of God's kingdom? You are all invited to the banquet. Are you coming? I'm in. our hymnals together is a song of response to number 516, Just As I Am. 516. Just as I
You are the messengers that Jesus spoke of. It is of you whom Jesus says, go out in the highways and the byways and the hedges and the ditches, go out and bring in the blind, the crippled, and the lame. So as you go and do as Jesus calls us, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Go with that power.